Have you ever wanted to experience what it was like in space, but don't want to go there? Yeah. Well, there is a new way. It's this zero-G experience on a Boeing 727. It will make you feel just like an astronaut, almost. Robert Moses actually tried this. Have you heard about this experience? Oh, yeah, I've done it. I oh, want to see what it. He, Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how Robert liked it. Well, okay. Mike and Roseanne, it's good to see you both. When our executive producer asked me this summer if I wanted to do this, it took me about one nanosecond to say, uh, yeah, I'll do that. On this flight, seat belts and, for that matter, sitting down are mostly discouraged. Feel free to move about the cabin. Actually, you will float about the cabin. And good luck controlling where you're going. Here's a riddle. How can you lose all of your body weight, no dieting, exercising, or pills required? Answer? Board G-Force 1, as I did. It's a modified Boeing 727 with floor-to-ceiling padding and a few seats for takeoff and landing that achieves weightlessness by flying parabolas, a series of ascents and descents that resembles a wave. Once the exclusive domain of astronauts, weightlessness is now available to those with the stomach and wallet for it. I've always loved space. Um, this is probably the closest thing I'll be to becoming an astronaut. For $7,500, you too can get close to becoming an astronaut. Zero G CEO Matt Goad says he takes about a third of the flights that his company offers. It's like being there at Christmas when people are opening a presents. After a normal takeoff from West Hampton Airport on a recent weekend morning, we had a short trip to dedicated airspace, a large area just for us to do our aerial maneuvering. The flight crew had us lay down on our backs. The plane ascended rapidly. When we reached the crest of each of the dozen parabolas, we lifted off the floor of the plane, weightless for about 20 seconds at a clip. Think of the feeling you get at the top of a roller coaster right when you're getting ready to descend and you're lifted out of your seat. That's how we felt. I would do it every day if I could. I could somersault and backflip like Simone Biles. I was at last graceful if you can call it that, and strong as the Hulk. One-handed push-ups were no sweat. Just being able to do a push-up and push completely off the ground and float up and come back down was, was mind-blowing. Whether I wanted to or not, I got up close and personal with my fellow passengers. Weightlessness rendered our intentions meaningless. I think you learn um, that, that swimming and trying to control yourself isn't going to work, that you just have to be in the moment and float. We bounced off each other and giggled like little kids. Strangers floated into my orbit and became new acquaintances. Spectacular. One of the best experiences in my life. And I've skydived, I kite surf, I do all this stuff. Nothing approaches this. Back on the ground, burdened anew by my earthly weight, I compared notes with my fellow travelers. It's just very freeing, and but you think that you can maybe control movement, and you can't. One fellow flyer bore a striking resemblance to Richard Branson. I want to be clear, you are not Richard Branson, right? I am Richard not Branson. He is Richard Deutsch, who got his boarding pass as a 60th birthday gift. Branson and Jeff Bezos helped spark this interest in space tourism. Jeff Bezos talked for minutes about his zero gravity experience and we are the only way to access this without spending half a million to millions. Stephen Hawking, Nicole Kidman, Keith Urban and Halle Berry are among the bold-faced names who have taken this flight. Goad, the CEO, hears from satisfied customers all the time, he says, like a couple who flew recently. The wife said, this is the most amazing experience, extraordinary, ever, anything that's ever happened to me. And the husband said, well, sweetie, we have two kids. And her response was, yeah. And if you're interested, you can board the next zero G flight. It takes off this Sunday in Rochester, so it's not that far from us. And yes, there are still slots available. I checked. If you have $7,500 and a good stomach. I was wondering, did anybody get sick on this? One person got sick. You had a, some people looked a, a little bit uh, little green. green. <laughs> um, yeah. they, they passed out. Um, ginger gum which kind of helps as you know helps settle the stomach so we also took some dramamine beforehand just in case yeah that's the thing i was going to ask you you didn't you didn't get sick and rosanna's concerned about stomach and yeah. space yeah 
But did you take something beforehand? Because I always did when I did. And you by did? the way, when I did this the first time, I did it with my astronaut classmates as an introduction, and it was the most fun I've ever had. It was the most fun day up to that point in my life. So just a wonderful thing to do. But I, I take the medicine when I do it. Did you do that as well? I, I did. I did. There I, you I, go. I took a drama me, yeah. um, and it was just, it was so cool because all these people were complete strangers. Then you get on the flight and we're yeah. like, you know, three, four, five year old kids on the playground. Yeah. It, 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 it was the ultimate icebreaker. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. Mike, did you ever get sick in space? I did. Yeah, I did. My, and I even I, had, I took a little bit of medicine to help prevent it, but it didn't work. And I was trying to trying to get through that day. And at the very, I knew I needed to drink a little bit of water because they tell you you can get dehydrated, very important to drink water, so I really have to try, and I did, and that wasn't such a good idea, because that water came right back up. <laughs> so, that, But the, by the second day, I got a good night's rest, and the second day, I felt great. But that first, it's an adaptation. It's an adaptation, but you get used to it. So the people that are on SpaceX right yeah. now, are they going to be doing what, what Robert did, but only for like three days? What, what are they doing on SpaceX? Yeah, they'll be, they'll be up there for three days. They're not going to have as much room as you did to play around in, <laughs> right. that, in that airplane. Like, yeah. like it's a smaller cabin. But they're going to they're gonna be doing a lot of uh, interesting things. Particularly, I think the most compelling thing they're going to be doing is looking out the window and observing the Earth and the stars. What they did to the top of that spacecraft, which is normally used to dock with the space station, they don't need that docking mechanism, so they replace it with a really cool big window. So they'll have a great view, and we talked about the altitude they're going to be at. They're going to be higher than, much higher than the space station. They'll be able to see the curve of our planet. They'll be able to see the stars as perfect points of light. They'll see the sun in a black sky. They'll experience all of these things. Uh, going around the planet for three days through that beautiful window. So I got that's the what chills they're be hearing doing. what this is like. Maybe I will go See, into I, outer space. Maybe we should all go together. <laughs> uh, that's what I think we should do. It's a great time. time. Instead of going on an airplane again, see if you get us a space. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'm in. Anybody know Richard Branson? <laughs> Somebody <laughs> make a phone call. What?